Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Check it out. We're doing an airplane today. This is the Zod Dart. And it's basically a fixed wing plane where you can just pop the wings off. You see how these come off. And also this is a V-tail. So these two also come off. Um, not really an unboxing today, but I did do some configuration on this thing and I kind of want to show you guys what I did before we fly. This is kind of a dual review. I'm also reviewing the Runcam Split Mini. And I've actually installed it already into the Dart. The Dart comes with, there's, e there's either an FPV version or there's this version, which is basically you put your own FPV system in and your receiver system. It already comes with the motor, it already comes with the prop, and it already comes with a flight controller and all the servos. So as you can see, as I'm taking this thing apart, it's pretty cool. Things just pop off for easy access to all the components. Um, I did go ahead and put a bunch of kind of like FPV racing quad stickers from my drone drop. So excuse if they don't really match airplanes, but I thought it made it look a little bit cool to have a little more stickers on it. Anyway, the way I have this set up is I'm using today the um, Radiolink AT-10 II. So this one just came in. So this is supposed to get like a couple of miles of range with this receiver. And uh, I'll talk about what I did to the controller once we get to that part. But first off, just basically put the receiver right in here, velcroed it in. I have one receiver antenna going down the wing this way. A couple millimeters down, cut in a line with an X-Acto knife and push that antenna in there. So if the wing does pop off, it'll still be able to pull out. The other antenna, if you look over here on the bottom, is actually coming out the bottom. So we have a good spread, kind of a 90, de 90 degree angle of both antennas for a great spread there. And then you can see I have this little cloverleaf FPV antenna sticking down off of a 600 milliwatt uh, transmitter. Let me show you that real quick. This also just pops off. And these are all magnets. The way this stuff is all held on is magnets, so real cool. So I just did basic wiring, kind of messy, but there's our 600 milliwatt transmitter coming out there, and it's just wired into uh, down here. And this thing actually comes with the AT10 transmitter. It comes with this little telemetry module where you can plug in your battery, and it can read the actual voltage of your craft on the um, the radio so when it starts getting low the radio will beep at you i didn't actually put any voltage information on the osd on the run cam split mini all i'm using is the um, micro usb plug in here so i just have my video and my power to it, it only takes five volts through this one i didn't want to go ahead and solder anything but it's it's basically a double stack and then you have kind of your power button and your menu button and once you boot this thing up it does take an SD card too in there. It's just like one of those push and pop out kind of SD card holders. So the Runcam Split Mini is going to record 1080p while you're getting FPV through here. 5.8 gigahertz FPV. So it's a pretty awesome thing. Mainly, I think, made for like micro mini racers. But I just went ahead and installed it in this. I thought it'd be cool to put in an airplane and just see how it worked. So you see how this little uh, micro SD card, I'm using my smaller one, like a 16 gig, just in case I lose this thing, I don't want to put like my 64 gig in there, my more expensive ones. So you just push and click, you hear how that kind of clicks. When you buy this thing, it's kind of a part and you just put the stack together and you want to put these plates on here. There's a brace plate here and there's a brace plate to hold your SD card in too that you put up, push on, it's like a little catch. So when you pull it out, you just have to pull this little metal piece down. So great for like if you're crashing or hitting things, your SD card just won't fly out. It's a nice little safety catch there. But there's the camera here right in front, real tiny. I know it's kind of hard to see what's happening here. But all I did was glue it into the front here and then just notched out some of the EPP foam. This is a very durable craft. It's made of that EPP styrofoam stuff that's real flexible and durable. So it should be okay. I actually crashed it at the park once and this wing flew off the antenna just pulled out and there was no damage whatsoever. All I'd do is sna snap the wings back on. So maybe we'll do some uh, crashing today, maybe not. I'm gonna use this uh, 1500 Turnigy uh, graphene battery. This is a 4S, this thing takes 4S. Just make sure your other electronics can take 4S. When I put this in, I'm gonna plug the balance into here and then it's gonna feed that voltage through the receiver to my radio. So, and I have it set to beep at like, I don't know, 14 volts. 
so I know when the 4S is getting kind of low to come back. I'll have the 1080 recording on the Run Cam Mini Split for you. This is a brand new camera on the market, so it's going to be kind of cool to see how this thing does. And also, I'll record my FPV in these um, these guys here, the Sky Zones. I'm using that new um, triple feed patch hybrid that came in my last drone drop box. So you guys will see how this performs at range. And what I'm gonna try to do is kind of go out, the wind's kind of blowing this way towards me at about five mile per hour. So I'm gonna try to just fly into the wind as far out as I can go. Maybe do a range test, I don't know. I have the fail safe set for this thing to kind of just turn the motor off and just do a slow circle. So if it drops range, hopefully it just circles and then we can catch back into range. So maybe we'll do a little bit of a range test, we'll see. Hopefully we don't lose it, maybe we'll crash. Okay, so I just wanted to show you guys how I'm wedging this guy in. So you can see how I have the power telemetry module that comes with the AT10 transmitter, just kind of Velcroed to the front there, just for easy installation. And all we do is plug in our 4S battery balance connector there. Put that on the Velcro. I don't want to make it too high so it conflicts with the door that closes. Push this battery back. And then that's where our power is coming out. And we want to secure this battery like super tight. And the cool thing about this plane actually, once I get this battery and I'll show you, is it has um, CG or center of gravity uh, spots on it that you can check before you start flying. So I'm just gonna crank this battery down as tight as possible and then flip this up. And you can see how it has these two CG there and CG there, little extruding little tabs here. So when you do put your battery in, kind of hard in the wind, but just put your fingers here and you can feel if it's fairly balanced or not. If it was too far forward, it'd be tilting this way, too far back that way, of course. So a good little um, test. I wanna go ahead and plug this little micro USB in for the camera. So of course we can get our feed going. And you can also solder in like I was saying before, so you don't have to plug in like that. So the very top two tabs here, this goes down, has a magnet right there. Hear that snap. And then this one, two tabs plug in, that pushes down, kind of overlaps where that magnet is, and then just turns to just totally lock everything in on top. And then we have the bottom left open. Before we close this thing up, I want to turn our controller on, AT10-2 controller. And then all we're doing is plugging in the craft. So kind of got the power piggybacked there, so powering in. Here a couple of beeps and we should be ready to go. All we need to do is close this thing up. You can see the transmitter has power and also there's the uh, mini split has the power too. It's a blue light there. It's gonna be blinking when it's recording. So let's put this bottom on here since we're pretty much all set to go. And that's it, the craft is ready to fly and you can see how I'm using ailerons here Everything looks good, up and down looks good. Now this thing has three modes, or two modes, I'm not sure if it has three, but it has self-leveling and acro as far as what I could see. And there's one more mode, I'm not sure what it is, but we'll test that out. So I'm gonna slap these goggles on, start recording on the Split Mini, and let's get flying in this awesome mountainside of Maui here. Okay guys, so here we go. So these goggles do have a camera in the front, but it's always a little tough for me to trust. Um, that camera, it's kind of hard to see and orientate yourself, you gotta get used to it. So I'm just gonna launch here and then pull the goggles down. But here we go, so launching into the wind, hopefully it doesn't crash, then I'm just gonna slide the goggles down. I've got the FPV recording for you. So here we go. Hopefully everything looks good, one last check. Oh, <laughs> shoot. So, that's what happens when you're looking at the plane and you try to pull down. What I did was I pulled this trigger, this button down instead of the elevator. So it should be fine though. I know this thing can take some abuse. So yeah, so see how the wings just kind of popped off. Let's try this again. That was actually a good thing that it crashed because I totally forgot to start recording on the, um, 
on the split mini. I totally forgot. So I want to press this button right here one time. It's just the power button until we see the blink. So now this 1080p is recording, so that was kind of a good thing it crashed. All right, let's try that again. All right, let's go. There we go. Okay, so let's get up. So I'd kind of like to show you guys how it's flying, but you know what? I'm just gonna do FPV session with you on this one. Okay, so here we go. So I really don't know how far I'm flying, but uh, I do have everything on, just checking my antennas. I'm gonna go a little higher. Try to go higher, just in case. Um, you know, we start losing control. So, so far so good. A little bit of waves in the screen. I'm just letting off the stick. And it looks pretty level. I'm just cruising with half throttle. Cruising with the wind. Everything hopefully is recording. And here we go, guys. This is it. With the AT-10 II. The Zod Dart with the run cam split mini camera and here's how it's looking awesome so i'm just giving a little bit of right aileron just to fight the wind a little bit but this is complete controls off and this is how it's flying directly into the wind so look at that just beautiful um, and this is again this is complete stabilized mode so here, here's what happens in stabilized mode so if i was to full elevator to the left you see how it will not flip that's just a circle full elevator to the left letting off now and then here's full rudder to the right so it's got those little um, rudders remember on the V tail so you have extra control so see how it's not really fighting the wind too good and then starting to go down using rudder so you got to be careful you want to mix in both controls Anyway, I don't want to lose orientation. Let me see where I came from. Right there. So you see the <laughs> you see that green patchy area. That's where I came from. So a little bit of scratchy um, when the antennas when the plane is facing me. See that? Just a little bit. But it looks good. So I'm just coming back a little. Um, I want to say that's almost a mile. How far I just went. Uh, it would sure would be nice to have a little more OSD and stuff. Um, and I'll, I'll work on getting something like that involved. Um, so let's do some other self-leveling stuff. So if I was to like full pitch it up on the elevator up. Here we go. So I'm at about medium throttle. Full stick up. And that's full throttle up too. See how it won't do a backflip? And now let's do... Um, full throttle off so my throttle is completely off and I'm gonna just do full stick forward and there you go you see how it won't really do any kind of acrobatic stuff and it does give itself a little bit of um, elevator on the two tails on the um, rudders the V tail so I'm off the stick right now if I push you see how it gave us a little bit of a pitch up elevator up that's because when you give it throttle, it automatically, if you're in self-leveling mode, it gives you a little bit of um, upward elevator. It's mainly for launching purposes. See, that's off. That's throttle on. So pretty cool. Really enjoyable. This is pretty cool. So now what I'm going to do is switch down. Oh. Did I lose range? Whoa. Whoa, yeah. So I lost range there for a sec, guys. So I want to get back up. So I cut out a range. So I'm going to give it full throttle for a bit and get up here. Whoa, my FPV is cutting out. I turned my head to the right, so that patch antenna is kind of um, pointing more towards it. I definitely want to get high because if this thing stalls and I lose control, I want it to be able to coast for a bit so I can get control back. So I'm about half throttle flying back up to where I am right up here on this mountain. 
and uh, I didn't go into acro yet. I think maybe what I'll do is I'll go into acro when I come back a little bit. But I'll look, I'll check the video, and I'll have pop up on the screen how far I went in that range where it cut out. So you guys know what to expect with this AT9 transmitter. You can see how if I orient the craft into certain ways, like if I turn right this way, it's a little more scratchy in certain sections. The FPV video, but still not bad. So there's the um, lavender farm. I'll just cruise over the lavender farm here on our way back. We're kind of coming with the wind now. That picture got really clear now. Nice and clear picture. Real nice. So, all right, we're doing good. So Zod, not bad. Um, I don't normally fly a lot of fixed wings, but I'm gonna be flying you know, as they come, every once in a while. So you guys can see how these things perform and how they are. So I'm up there, so I'm gonna switch now. I'm gonna get a little bit more altitude. I'm full throttle forward, full elevator up. You can hear it over there in the distance, actually. Okay, now I'm gonna switch this down to um, acro mode. So this switch here, hopefully you can see on the camera, switching to the middle. So there's no self-leveling on this. So I'm gonna give it some throttle. Let's try some flips and spins. I have not done acro on this. Well, actually I did try in the park and that's when the wind fell, wing fell off. So let's give it some throttle and do a right roll. All right. So you can do some acrobatics. Let's try, um, see if we can do a flip. Full throttle. Oh, not quite. Whoa. So, <laughs> I want to be careful because I'm not the best acro flyer with planes, especially. I was getting a little bit squirrely there. Let's see if I f uh, flip the switch all the way down. I'm not sure what it's going to do. Can I go straight up? Yeah, I can just about go like straight up, but then it wants to kind of stall. So I'm gonna switch back into self-leveling, boom. And you see how it just kind of, boom, it just leveled itself out. So if I panic in acro, I can just do that. No problem. And I have a nice level flying, and I can just do what I want to do. What is that third mode? Okay, real quick, let me gain some altitude. Okay. Full throttle, full stick up. Okay, let me switch all the way down to that bottom mode. I have no idea what this is. Is this maybe a, possibly like a horizon mode? I don't know. Let's see if I let off. Yeah, it does feel like it's stabilizing it. Okay, so horizon, maybe I can do some rolls. Oh, nice. That's the way to go. Okay, so it does feel like kind of a horizon all the way down in that third part of the channel. There we go, there's a loop. Okay. So that kind of stuff's possible, sort of a horizon, and an acro, and a full self-leveling, and a full self-level now. All the way back. Looked like it got a little weird in the self-level until it found its level. Oh, that's cool. Having lots of fun. So far, so good. Let's dive bomb this uh, lavender farm. So I'm full pitch down, full throttle off. Just soaring. So this is the stability in about five mile per hour winds. Coming from right that direction, right where the sun's at. Oh, getting a little scratchy on the FPV, kind of turning my head. It seems like when I do get that um, patch antenna facing it, it gets a little better, which is cool. Cool, full throttle. No idea how fast it's going, but it should be going pretty quick. Awesome. 
I think these guys up here are having like a frisbee tournament, frisbee golf. See all those cars there? Oh, that's pretty cool. Let's go check them out up there. Do a pass. So I'm flying kind of directly over my head now. I'm gonna turn around a little bit. Check these guys out. Wow, cool. Wow, those guys have a full setup there, tents and everything. That's pretty cool. So there I am. See my car there? I'm full throttle off. And you can still hear the motor going because the prop is not fold down, doesn't fold down. So the motor's still gonna spin, just freewheel, and you're gonna hear some noise. Would be cool if uh, you could put like a collapsing prop on there. All right, so here we go. So still going, here's full um, elevator to the left and full rudder, boom. Wow, so you can kind of do a flip almost in self-leveling, let's try that again. Let's get up a bit, boom. Full elevator, wow, so you can do really tight spins. I don't want the wings to fall off. The wings didn't feel like they clipped in super tight, so I don't wanna, we'll see how they are when we land. Anyway, there I am, there's my car. I hear another drone flying. I think somebody's driving a, driving a Phantom. Maybe you guys can see it. I can't. Okay, feeling that wind hit it. I get scared when I get low and then that cross breeze hits it. Let's come in, do a little bit of a flyby here. So I'm full throttle off and you can hear that motor just spinning up a little. Let's turn into the wind here, still coasting. Oh, there's that drone. There's the other one, all right, there we go. Cool. All right, that's where that guy's flying it. I think that was a drone, let's circle around. Can't really see him anymore. I could see him when it was against the sky though, that was neat. Let's try to come in here and do a little flyby. Hello guys. <laughs> nice. So a little bit of teetering, I don't know, maybe it's a CG, I could adjust a little. But it might just be the way this thing flies, since the wings are so short. Kind of what I'm thinking. I'm looking for that drone. I hear him. Can't really see him though. Awesome. Another flyby? Woo! That's what it's all about. That would have been sore, right, if I hit myself, but pretty confident in the control of this thing now. Nice and easy. FPV seems to be doing great. And where's this guy's drone? I hear it. it must be kind of low. I don't want to go too low because I don't want the FPV to cut out and the hill block it. Check that out, okay, so just perfectly all the way off the sticks and about half throttle. And let's turn into the wind and get that again. This will give you a great idea of how stable this thing is if we're just off the sticks, half throttle on the side of a mountain, going into the wind. That's it, just a little bit of flutter, back and forth, but 
very good according to what I've reviewed so far. I hope you guys are enjoying this. I know this is going to be kind of a long one because this one, I don't even hear any beeping on the controller yet. It has that telemetry and it's keeping track of the battery's um, voltage on the controller, not on my goggles. You can see my goggles are perfectly clear. All I can see is that red recording uh, light up on the screen. There's the airfield there, the club, just below. Just cruising back to my homestead. Home base here. Awesome. Ooh, another flyby. Oh, nice. That was really easy to just glide in like that. You saw me just give it a little bit of throttle as I came in. And you know, this thing is foam and the propeller's in the back. So you're really not, if, even if you do have an accident, unless the battery like blows up or something. Well, I thought that was my motor, but that was the horn for that event up there, whatever's going on. Um, anyway, what I was saying was, uh, this thing's all foam, the propeller's in the back. So the front's completely soft. You're not gonna, if you do have a crazy accident, you're not gonna damage anything or hurt anything unless the battery blows up, flies into a plane engine or something. There's no planes around here, so I don't gotta worry about that. That's for sure. Let's get back over these guys. I'm gonna turn in my head. So my FPV is over there, so I wanna check these guys out again. I'm gonna go up the hill a bit. I'm seeing a little bit of wavy lines in the FPV when I do give it quite a bit of throttle. But I think that's just a frequency thing. I do have a, um, a BEC filter on this. I put in line between the, okay, let's turn. I got a little bit of a click there on the FPV. We're gonna turn, we're gonna full throttle off and just coast over these folks here. Um, anyway, what I was saying was I put in a filter in line where it powers the run cam split mini. Check that out. I'm full off. That's kind of cool. I'll have that uh, high def FPV and the recording of the card up on the screen so you guys could see all that. Kind of neat. Flying directly overhead. Let's see what happens with the video. See that? So a couple of little scratchies and that's it. I'm turning my head now again towards it, turning around. Wow, so I'm liking this thing. I think when I when I hear the beep, I'll come in on the low voltage. I'm gonna get some altitude here and then I'm just gonna peek at it actually. Full throttle. Pull up a bit. Throttle off. I'm gonna lift up my FPV goggles and just give it a glance. Yeah, we're still at 15 volts, nice. There's a 4S battery in there. So I just looked at the controller. I have it set to beep at 14 volts. Um, so if I'm far away, there'll be plenty of time to come back. Whoa. Uh oh. Okay, we just completely crashed. <laughs> what the? Wow, did we lose? We like lost signal. Oh man, that was weird. I started to do like a complete um, whirlwind into the ground. Shucks. I better go find that thing. Anyway, let's see what the damage is. I'm gonna go find that. We'll see what the damage is and see, you know, what we can do. Little pros and cons. I was walking and I was like, wow.
Wow, look at that beautiful player that suddenly kamikaze just. I know, I can like barrel roll down to his neck. Oh, it's, it's totally busted. Yeah. Well, thanks like, for grabbing it. Beautiful plane. It hits like right on the mud embankment. Uh, Oh, okay guys, here it is. So just retrieved it and some gentleman, I think his name was Martin, um, was able to grab it for me, kind of crashed near him. But here's the after effect of that kamikaze straight down crash. I don't know what happened. It's almost like a wing came off or something partially because it was just like doing some kind of weird downward spiral. I thought maybe it lost control, but I don't know why it would spiral like that if it lost control. I just have the rudder and the ailerons just tilted a little bit. And then when it was spiraling down, I was able to give it like full throttle temporarily while I tried to pull up. So I really don't know um, what the problem was. But you know, those kind of malfunctions happen. So here's the damage. So if we take the front off here, this guy here is fine. This whole top area is fine. Everything in top, flight controller, servos, all look fine. The wings look actually fine too. Um, and maybe that's one thing that they can work on is maybe have these wings clip in a little tighter. Um, I'm hoping a wing didn't fall off, but you can see, well, yeah, that shouldn't have, that shouldn't have been a wing that fell out. I really don't know what it is. Maybe some kind of interference or something or failure on board, but. Anyway, this part's fine, wings are fine. So this is the major damage here. See that? So the whole front just basically broke apart. I mean, it literally just came down near, like spinning and just boom. So I don't know what the deal is. That was strange to me, really strange. But anyway, it's definitely salvageable. It looks like um, if I kind of pull this, let me try to pull this battery out and assess the damage a little more. Um, the run cam split was actually, mini was actually uh, still recording when I got it from the guy. Gentleman in the black and white plaid shirt. <laughs> it's kind enough to come running up the road with it. Um, but everything looks fine. Hopefully the mini's okay. Looks like you got a little tug on the wire here from breaking apart. But look at that, the whole nose just broke off. And that's kind of a heavy battery. I mean, that's a 4S 1.5, 1500 milliamp hour. So there is some weight there in the front. But if I was to fix this thing, really all I need to do is slide this back in the notch. It looks like the balsa wood here cracked just a little bit, got bent up a little. So if I can just bend that back and check that out, just glue everything shook, right back together, we're back in business. Everything's fine, motors, all the control surfaces are fine, wings are fine. Everything else is A-OK. -okay. Looks like the VTX is even fine, a little dirt on the antenna. Probably went boom and then, I think it landed, he said it landed in some dirt mud or something. But cool guys, well that's the Zod. <laughs> Including range test and um, crash test. And totally repairable, I got some of that. Uh, water activated Gorilla Glue that's perfect for this stuff. You know, just put it in there and then shoot. And look at that, when it's together, you can't even tell there was a crack. So, I'll get this thing back up and running in no time. And that's what's so cool about these foam planes is you crash hard and something like this happens. Minimal, usually, especially if there's no engine or prop in the front, if it's a pusher like this, uh, pretty minimal um, damage. Of course, unless you crash into like shredding metal of a fence. <laughs> but anyway, guys, I will have the video up on the FPV recording on my goggles, what I was seeing while I was talking to you. And also the run cam, the new run cam split mini, uh, probably mostly made for mini quads, but it works great for aircraft like this. I may just leave it in here or maybe put it in something else, not sure. But that's kind of my dual review, actually triple. The Radio AT10 and the Runcam Split Mini. I hope you enjoyed that review and I will see you guys in the next one. Don't forget all the stuff for, that I'm using today, all this, these things here, um, the Sky Zones, the controller and the craft and some of the parts I'm using 
uh, oh yeah the red cam split mini all down in the description down below so check that out check out the pricing but i hope you enjoy that review and i'll see you guys in the next one great crash test <laughs> and this was a fun plane don't get me wrong super fun it did well i just don't know what happened i mean literally I lost control and it just went kamikaze spiral down i have no idea what that was from but totally repairable see you guys in the next video i just really want to see if this thing still works Yeah, perfectly fine. I have no idea what that was. Weird. Awesome. Time to repair and fly again. <laughs>